I'm Matthew Penning, and I am Director of Music here at St. Andrew Presbyterian Church. In 2008, there was a major flood here in the Iowa River Valley that took out a big portion of the Iowa uh, University of Iowa Arts campus. A part of that was Clapp Recital Hall, which within the doors of Clapp Recital Hall was the uh, large Cassavant pipe organ. During that time, there were efforts made to do a lot of sandbagging to try to save the buildings, uh, but the flood waters won. And so the, the organ became uh, dormant for a time. Well, I knew that the organ, that organ was not flooded, was not damaged because of its location in the gallery. But when I heard that Clapp was to be uh, demolished, I was very concerned that it would somehow or another be thrown out. I was very concerned about that, worried about it a great deal. Well, I think it, uh, you already have a very luxurious music program going here and it can only get better to have access to an instrument of that kind and probably for church music uh, events, for recital events, for uh, worship uh, conferences or whatever, it will have a voice that will be very strong, I think. There's nothing on an organ as hard for people to realize the only thing that needs to be replaced are light bulbs probably and maybe a blower, but the instrument itself cannot deteriorate. There's nothing that will, I mean, there are instruments in Europe hundreds and hundreds of years old, the wood stays there, that's perfectly fine. It's one of those things that you will invest in uh, uh, that will increase in value as the time goes by, not decrease. It seems like an awful lot of money, but when you think it's, so, it's all handmade and it's all hand, uh, what do I want to say, regulated and, and uh, dealt with, there's nothing that is uh, mass produced. That's different. We don't buy a lot of things that way. We don't buy cars that way either. They're mass produced. <laughs> that this was the only large-scale instrument in any university in the United States when it came to be. That's hard to imagine now. There was no tracker organ in, in Iowa. Kropp had a little practice organ that they used at the school, but in terms of a concert instrument, no school had them. Really, I think they will be very excited by it and, and knowing something about its history, that of its significance for the, for the university community and for the church community of Iowa City. I think it will have an enormous impact, I really do. It can't help but have an impact. How many churches have that kind of luxury, a 56 stop instrument suddenly is there, it's available? <laughs> Not too many. <laughs> and the fact it's going to be installed uh, similar to the way it was at, uh, in Clap Hall, I think that's, uh, that's highly significant too. It has never had a life as a church organ. Now it will. So it has a second chance too. Eventually, Gloria Day, a Lutheran church, um, I discovered upon getting to Iowa City was getting a new Cassavant organ. And uh, my really close ties with Cassavant began there. With the, I helped with the installation during my freshman year here at the university. That was in February of 65, 1965. And, uh, but I've had uh, uh, this long, long uh, connection with them. Well, it, it's a fact that it, it's an enormous amount of handwork, you know, and the pipes are not uh, coming out of a mold, but they start out as flat pieces of metal and are rolled up on mandrels, I mean, that's the metal pipes, and soldered together. Um, the uh, people that do this sort of thing are extremely skilled, and um, it, 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 when you have come to that realization uh, of uh, that tremendous uh, talents that it takes um, to, to make an instrument, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's really fascinating. And that also goes for the woodwork that's involved, the chests, which, which are the um, means of uh, winding the instrument that play the pipes. Um, it's all very, uh, uh, very fascinating. It's very fascinating. 
the uh, fact that that instrument is going to end up in a church, and actually Gerhard was a member of, of uh, Gerhard Kropp was a member of the of St. Andrew went back in the days when they were still living in town. Um, I think it's, it completes a very interesting circle uh, for that instrument. Um, I met the organ when I was principal over at Southeast Junior High and we would rent Clapp Recital Hall. One, because it was air conditioned space for big musical groups and um, too, because it was such an absolutely gorgeous space. And so I watched countless orchestra, choir, band concerts in the shadow of this organ. And I always, the, the organ was always there. It was up above all of us. But I've never heard it played before. But going to Clapp Recital Hall, that was just another, it was another part of the beautiful environment that was there. So when the, the flood came in 2008, uh, our whole family got involved in sandbagging, wherever sandbagging was needed. And we sandbagged every day for what felt like weeks, but was really a matter of days in an mm -hmm. effort to battle the rising river. And one of our last sandbagging opportunities was down in the, uh, right outside Voxman, where they had just mm -hmm. dumped as much sand as could and we were just filling as fast as we could to try to protect what could be protected. And I remember thinking, it's a good thing that organ is up high because the seats can be replaced, other parts can be replaced, but that organ is going to stay dry. And the only reason I knew there was an organ in there was because I had been a part of all these young people's music experiences with their families. So, and then the call went out for people to think about helping with the removal of the organ. And I had retired and was facing my first, not going to school for the first time since kindergarten. And that, that was hard. That was so this was a, an opportunity for me to participate uh, in, in something in giving back. Because that's, that's a purpose of the time I have now as I'm refocusing is to give back in some way to the community that has, has given me so much and to our church community which has given our family so much. So arriving with my cooler and chocolate chip cookies, um, there were 20 ready volunteers, there were our congregation members who brought with them their part partners who go for walks with them, their neighbors across the street, uh, people who had taken days off from work in order to be a part of this. People who had lots of musical passion uh, for any kind of music. Uh, people who knew a whole lot about organs from the inside out. And, um, so from all walks of life, all ages, um, but a sense of willingness and commitment. Uh, the group from, from Dobson, it, as I tried to think of a great descriptor for that group, they were gentle men. They were gentlemen, but they were gentlemen, and so knowledgeable and so patient, <laughs> so patient with those of us who started to reach out and touch things without our gloves on and um, mixed up the order of things or didn't put things in the crates correctly. They, they were a group of individuals who have a great gift and a great love for taking good, good, good care of the, this wonderfully crafted instrument. So we, the, the volunteers were just asked to do whatever was necessary. So that's one of those once in a lifetime experiences to be a part of that step in bringing the organ home to our, our house of faith. and. Um, I told Matthew when we're ready to unload, I'll be back and I'll have no more experience than I had when I left. But I'm sure the nice people from Dobson will, will once again, those gentle men will, will help us do it the right way. One of the things that I'm excited about for this instrument uh, to be utilized in worship is the wealth of colors that the different stops uh, the different sounds that it will be able to make to enhance 
not only uh, congregational singing in a new way, but to add the, psych the excitement, uh, the vibrancy uh, that others will talk about that is possible with a mechanical action instrument. And so one of the things that, uh, that will also, I think, excite the community as well is having a rich piece of history, having something that is theirs uh, to be able to share with the world, really. But again, a new generation that is going to uh, have the same awe and have the same inspiration uh, to be able to learn on an instrument like this and to be inspired by it for their worship. <laughs>